So I have some motion capture data here that's positioned as a function of time. So I've used my pretty plot function to create a graph with vertical position on the vertical axis in meters and time on the horizontal axis. And there's several things going on here. Really, um, I'm only interested, really interested in kind of the region between one and three seconds. And so I should be just plotting that, or I could be just plotting that. But uh, that's not what we're focusing on right now. What we're focusing on right now is how to use the diff equation to go, or the diff function to get a velocity here. So um, I'm going to, here I have my ZCOM. I've cleared my NAND, I've gotten rid of any NANDs. I have a time that matches it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, calculate a velocity for my Z direction. And I'm going to use the diff function, which is a numerical differentiation function. It takes, uh, I believe it's a right-hand differential, so it just takes two data points and finds the difference between them in your vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that of COM. And you'll note the things that pop up in the help here. Um, the first argument into this function is the vector you're differentiating. The second one tells you uh, how many or how many derivatives you want. So right now we're doing the first derivative, but if we wanted acceleration, we could just put a two here and that would give us the acceleration. We're, this is an optional argument. We're doing the first direction. Uh, the third thing is that diff works down the rows. If you wanted to make it work across the columns, you could use the dim and do this dimension two uh, to go across the columns. So we'll go ahead and just do the first derivative here with our taking the difference. And because we want to actually differentiate with respect to time, we're going to divide each element of our matrix by dt, the time step, which here is uh, the defined up there. So uh, if I do that, I can then create a new figure. And I'm just going to use the regular plot function. And I'm going to do time mocap, time for this comma vz and then we'll go ahead and run the code and it throws an error gets gets a couple plots out there it still plots our figure three uh, there's a couple of extra figures hiding in the early code um, but it throws an error when we get to figure four and it tells us that we had an error using plot the vectors must be the same length in line 51 right here so and there's a couple of different ways around that. Probably uh, the most flexible way, though it has a lot of uh, lines of code or has a lot of characters associated with it, would be to take time for the mocap and do one to the size of time mocap along the first dimension minus one. And the reason for that is when we took the difference between the vectors, you only get one number for every pair of vectors. So your uh, ray gets one thing smaller, and then it gets one thing smaller again when you differentiate for acceleration as well. So now if we go ahead and do this line of code, we've matched up all our parentheses correctly. Uh, we get this graph, there's this really weird spurious spike at one, which was where our NANDs turned into values. So that's what's going on there. Probably what that means is that the markers were out of view of the camera and then suddenly they came into view of the camera. And so it went from being a NAND to an actual piece of data. And then you can see right here, there's this nice kind of linear region where the person is clearly in the air. This is jumping data. So this person is clearly in the air in free fall during that time. So uh, that's how you use the diff. That's how you get it as a function of time, how you take your derivative with respect to time. If you just use diff by itself, it just takes the difference between your points and it doesn't define it as a velocity because you're not actually doing the change in position over the change in time. You have to include that change in time piece separately.